Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Damn Fan channel. Yes, we've got another DCYA comic to go through. This is the last one on my personal roster, although I'm sure you also have your own requests that you want me to look through, and you can leave those down in the comment section below. Today, we're looking at Batman Nightwalker. You know, I could have done a read through of this, but part of the reason why I decided to read it on my own and then do a review for it is because I thought it had the potential to be good. Yeah, imagine that, right? A good DCYA? That would be chaotic. That would be crazy. I think the earth would actually shatter. It's interesting because it's based on a novel by this girl Mary Lou. Of course, you know, bigger than the actual title of the book because that's how DCYAs work. And then they just put it together into a graphic novel. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, so like, was this story so popular that they decided to make it an official graphic novel? Is that the idea? Do people actually like this story already? And that's kind of why I was thinking that it might be good. Now, from what I knew about this as I was getting into it, is it was supposed to be like a romance with a young teenage Bruce and this gal and that's not entirely you know out of the ordinary for batman stories obviously he's had other romances with criminals most popular being i guess catwoman but also there's mask of the phantasm and so i was kind of expecting those kind of vibes from this comic as i was getting into it maybe they like nail those same vibes from the previous stories that have also done that type of forbidden romance between good guy Bruce and uh, a bad girl. But I gotta be honest with you, it, it was kind of a frustrating read. I had higher expectations, which I normally don't have at all. I don't have any expectations when I go into DCYA. But yeah, let's go through what's actually the story. We begin with a uh, young Bruce Wayne. He goes to this party. He's showing off his new car because I guess he like works in super tech. And as he's like stepping out of the party to take a breather, he notices that police are chasing a criminal. This criminal is part of this whole cult that's kind of against rich people trying to like steal the wealth and uh, I guess redistribute it or, or keep it for themselves or whatever they do. They always target rich people. They always like murder rich people, etc., etc. Bruce sees this police chase going on and he's thinking to himself, oh, they're never going to be able to catch this guy. Now with what's under the hood of their, of their cars. Police, hurry, he's getting away. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. We have a literal golf cart battery under our hood. We can't catch him. No wonder crime is so high in Gotham. They're all just driving away. Police can't do anything about it. Bruce gets into his own car, which is supposed to, I guess, be faster than the police cars. And he tries to do a, a pit maneuver to stop the criminal. And uh, he kind of messes it up. So both of their cars flip over. And naturally, you know, Bruce has to face some charges because he acted out as a, a vigilante and you, you can't do that, which is all part of the reason why typically Batman has the disguise. But I guess Bruce hasn't learned <laughs> that yet. Now he faces criminal charges. Granted, you know, he's rich, so he manages to get out of it with a slap on the wrist. However, the woman who's like, I guess, deciding his sentence kind of doesn't like him and is pretty upfront about not really liking him. She like judges him for being a rich, privileged guy. She's like, oh, all these people in your mansion who work for you, do you even know their names? <laughs> like that's supposed to be some kind of, oh. I don't know their names. Some kind of great reveal that Bruce is actually like a jerk or something. But I mean, the guy's 17. What if he's just antisocial? What if he's shy? He's just like, oh man, I don't know all the names of like 50 people around my house who just do work, don't talk to me and leave. Like, he knows the name of his, his the one guy who does talk to him. It's just so presumptuous, you know, and it doesn't really reveal anything about Bruce per se. It's just like, really dumb. It's just a dumb argument. She decides community service, but they decided that his community service would be held at Arkham Asylum. Why so serious? So this is looking kind of sketchy, uh, but not only that, 
currently at Arkham, they are holding in a criminal who is known for targeting rich people and killing them. Oh, no, no, no. And at this no, point, no. I was like, oh, oh, so Gotham City wants to get the shit sued out of them by, like, the richest guy in the city. Why would you make his community service sentence so dangerous? Probably almost getting him killed. I mean, in the story. Spoiler, he almost gets killed a couple times. I'm pretty sure that's a human rights violation right there. <laughs> Literally throwing a child, nonetheless, like 17 year old into the lion's den with a bunch of criminals who want to kill him. I'm pretty sure that wouldn't really hold up well, but whatever. Not only that, he gets to clean and do work around the female only section yep. of Arkham Asylum. Whatever. I guess reality doesn't matter in this book, right? <laughs> he gets to, to meet the girl on the cover, and she, yes, she is part of the anti-rich people cult. She's got this attitude about her that's, I feel like if you're a teenager, it seems like super cool and mysterious, but as soon as you grow up, you're looking at that and you're like, ugh, it's kind of cringe. <laughs> kind of not so cool anymore <laughs> now that I'm an adult reading these kind of stories, you know? Her whole thing is that she won't talk to anyone, so they can't really find out information on the cult, but she'll talk to Bruce. He's a hot guy. <laughs> and so he keeps on going out of his way to talk to her to try to get information and bust the case, although there's really not that much of a mystery. The graphic novel treats it as though it's a mystery, but is it really? There's a random, super random plot twist at the end, but it has nothing, there's no clues leading up to that plot twist. And I would argue that the plot twist isn't even necessary to continue the story. There's like an attempt jailbreak, it doesn't work, and then she actually does escape at one point, and then he like, he's finding out that, oh man, she betrayed me. She knew that I was gonna be the next target of the cult, and all the money that she took was being funneled back into a charity that my mother started, so she was actually a good guy the whole time. And then, yeah, I guess I'll just reveal the plot twist. It's not a jaw-dropping plot twist at all because it feels like it doesn't, it doesn't affect the story at all. But she opens up to Bruce and she's like, okay, so my brother had like this illness that was killing him. My mother was like paying out the wazoo to get this doctor to work on him. And it turns out the doctor wasn't helping him. He was just like feeding him sugar water. Holy shit. You could sue for so much! You'll never have to work again! But no, in instead, the mother didn't didn't sue. Instead, she just murdered the doctor. Mm -hmm. Wasted opportunity, if you ask me. You get the idea that her brother died because the doctor couldn't actually help him. But what actually happened, the big plot twist at the end, was that her mother found some alleyway doctor some black market doctor that actually did help him. Weird, you'd think it'd be the other way around, but I guess you can trust alleyway doctors, guys. Who needs reality? We have DCYA. So the big plot twist is that her brother is actually the leader of the anti-rich cults, and her brother's an actual bad guy, and then at the end he like tries to betray his sister. His sister gets shot, she has like a fake death scene with Bruce, but I know all the while like, obviously she's not actually dead. She had a bulletproof vest on, and it's not even like the bulletproof vest was covered up. And for some reason, we're gonna have this fake death scene, like, Oh, light. I'm going towards the light, Bruce. Ah. The bullet is crumpled up on your, on your gut. Just take it out. You're fine. It's just a little bruising. Calm down. And then it turns out, oh, they took her body to, like, the morgue, but it disappeared. Because she's actually alive. So that's, uh, Batman Nightwalker. <laughs> You can understand why it is a little bit of a frustrating read. The story itself is like, you could make it work. I mean, I've seen other people make it work. This same type of story of Bruce Wayne falling in love with a villain. I was so disappointed to realize that this, even though it has so much to use as reference in the Batman universe as to how to do this type of relationship, it just completely floppy dobby I mean, even the, the relationship itself, I didn't feel any romance happening between them. 
throughout the whole comic. It just didn't feel romantic ever. It felt more like they were trying to play mind games with each other than it was they were trying to flirt with each other. The only hint I really had that they were supposed to be romantically interested in each other was just like other characters saying that Bruce was in love with this girl and he would be like, uh, no, I'm not. Do they see something that I don't? Because I'm actually seeing all the scenes with Bruce and her together and I'm not catching up on any. I don't see any romance. This doesn't appear romantic to me at all and I'm the audience who gets to see everything. But everyone else is like, oh yeah, Bruce likes her. Just like blatantly explaining to the audience rather than showing us that Bruce likes her. Cool. Overall, disappointment. Nothing entirely offensive about it. And I would even argue that like it's not nearly as badly written as so many of the other DCYAs. There's nothing like politically obnoxious about it, I should say. I mean, obviously the whole privilege thing was dumb and uh, the whole alleyway doctor being better than the actual doctor at a hospital. That's really stupid. But it almost seemed like it kind of fit because the whole rest of the comic was also <laughs> like equally as ungrounded in reality as like those random plot points in there and those random scenes that were just like eh. i'm not a fan of batman nightwalker not like offended by it and i probably wouldn't have a, a huge issue with teenagers reading it or anything it's just not good why don't you give them other better material out there to read and that's a that's a huge problem with really most of these DCYA comics is that these exist, right? Uh, but there's so many other comics that also exist that like do it better. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that comic, really. If you want to check out my comic, it might not be as serious nitty gritty as this one, but some of you need a good laugh and I can give you that. With my new comic, It's Not Like Getting a Job will kill you. Links in the description, links in the pinned comment. I would highly recommend checking it out or checking out some of my other comics that I have up on burningstarcomics.net. And some of you may not know this, but YouTube really cares about engagement of the video, so please make sure that you're liking and leaving a comment, even if you're just commenting something dumb. I like dumb comments, in fact. Subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me, more TCYA read-throughs or reviews, whichever you prefer. I'm sure that you ha all have like your own requests of what I should be reading, so definitely let me know. Join the fan club on Subscribestar if you would like to see some sneak peek previews or posts regarding my own comic books, as I do make quite a lot of them. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Till then, bye! Program restart.